Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending February the 11th, 2022. And we're going to throw in a little happy Valentine's uh, gift uh, here at the end of this deal. So I'm going to give you five stock picks that ought to be a great gift for your Valentine. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, what happened this week? Wow. The uh, inflation report spiked the highest in, in 40 years. It's like it's like uh, you'd almost want to bet futures on the next uh, report on that. They, they they should have a trade for for how much higher can it go? The big the big news though is what happened with that is the 10 year popped two percent for the first time uh, since 2019. Okay, and the uh, the the yield curve flattened. And it flattened because of the anticipation across the board of the Fed's more hawkish move. You know, matter of fact, you had uh, Mr. Bullard out of the uh, St. Louis Fed that actually came forth and said, look, we need to do a 50 uh, basis point uh, rate hike. And then that talked, uh, you know, analysts started talking, uh, you know, 100% uh, basis points uh, over the year. Uh, that caused the markets to really take a, a you know a, a fall uh, in the futures this morning, and then by the time uh, the other Fed uh, uh, members, uh, including the uh, gentleman from uh, the Atlanta Fed, uh, came came forward and said that, uh, that that they were comfortable where things were. There was no need to go above 25 basis points right now. So things have settled out. They're kind of just even sideways from where they were yesterday. The big beneficiary of all this uh, is. Uh, the small and mid caps, that's where the money's running into. Fortunately for you guys, that's where a lot of our holdings are, okay? Earnings still continue to come in very nicely. Uh, uh, companies are able to absorb this and do better. The big difference between now, inflation now, and, and inflation that turned into stagflation back in the 70s is that uh, when OPEC jumped the prices back then, there was no way for companies to absorb those uh, increased input costs and pass on to the consumer, okay? Right now, there's so much liquidity in the, in the economy that, that companies are being able to do that. Therefore, profit margins are continuing to grow uh, and, and, and along with the inflation. And consumers are able to, they have cash, and so they're able to go ahead and, and, and accommodate that. There's going to be an end to that movement uh, at some point, but hopefully... Uh, by that time, the the supply chains uh, have, have uh, crisis have resolved and uh, and things go back down. What's going to be sticky uh, is the wage. I mean, wage hikes are that those are not going to go away. So that's the thing that's going to carry forward. All right, uh, big deal again is that the the two year ten year spread is only forty basis points. So really, you've got a flattened yield curve. Doesn't matter where you're at on it. Uh, because it's being manipulated, uh, that's I don't I say it's not recessionary in a normal environment. That would absolutely be recessionary. Not so here because of the, uh, of, the uh, of what the Fed's doing. It's mind-boggling. Uh, all the people that uh, are gurus in this area are just like uh, you want to talk about a conflicting strategy. How do you hike rates on the low end and continue to artificially suppress them on the long end? because they continue to add to their balance sheet uh, anyway. What I want to talk to you about this week is taxes. Okay, we're in a rising tax rate environment. Inflation is one thing, but taxes are, are going to uh, come, uh, come into play here. Why? Because inflation, beyond just being a function, uh, uh, the transitory uh, part of it, uh, the, the temporary part of it, uh, due to the supply chains, that will, that will go away at some point. What's not going away is the deficits, okay? The magnitude of the deficits. We hit 30 trillion uh, last week or two, okay? Uh, and, and, and they've announced that uh, we're at 30 trillion. Now look, here's the thing. GDP has to increase as well, okay? In order for the, uh, the deficit not to swamp the federal budget annually, okay? If GDP, uh, we, we've got a shrinking workplace. We've got a, 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 not a workplace, but the, the people, a shrinking work demographic, okay? There are fewer and fewer people uh, because uh, every day more and more boomers are going into retirement. Now you've had this great resignation. Can't believe that they call it that, but uh, that's got to be short lived, okay? Uh, it's, it's more like a great sabbatical. Here's my point. With the deficits this big, rates cannot go very much higher because of the central interest costs that must be paid. And, and there's a constitutional mandate 
Congress must pay the interest on the national debt, okay? They have to do that. Well, the debt is, is, is over $30 trillion. Interest rates can only, can only control this to a certain point. Then you have to start looking at other revenue sources. So I had, you know, people are contacting me and say, look, uh, it's, death, it's a death note for politicians to raise taxes. They can't do it, okay? It'll be suicide. Well, maybe, but all right now, all they have to do is absolutely nothing because the Trump tax cuts of 2017 expire by their own terms. They don't have, nobody has to do anything, and those tax cuts go away. December the 31st, 2025, you wake up January 1, 2026 with an increase all across the board uh, of tax rates. Say you're, most people are on the 24% bracket, okay? Say that you're in the 24% bracket and you move into the 28% bracket under the old 2017 uh, tax structure, okay? That only feels like 4% nominally, but when you actually do the math, that turns into a 16.7% tax increase to you, effectively, okay? That's the amount of dollars that you're paying out. Just jump 16.7%. For a 12% bracket, moving up only into the 15% bracket, that's a 25% effective tax increase for you. So it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, tremendous numbers before it starts being very dramatic in terms of its actual impact in terms of the cash that you're out uh, on the increase uh, that you're paying. Now, another thing to look at is that every piece of data we could lay our hands on uh, say that 2030, 2032 are the inflection points. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin's last report as Secretary of Treasury, we haven't got a new one out of the Biden administration yet, but his report, clearly numerous times through that report, this is unsustainable. And I'm not even, that, that's the words that they use, unsustainable course. And so they're looking at, at how things have to change and, and, and they were looking in that report of increased GDP, but the only way to do that because of the shrinking work demographic is is through technology. Technology generally is 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 going to cause uh, some more employment, but it's going to it's going to take away jobs. If you have robots coming in and in, in, in the factories, you're going to take away more jobs there. So you continuing you've, you've got a problem there with entitlement spending, see programs, and so you've got this tension going on. We have this increased pressure. Okay, not just uh, for, for increased tax rates to, to address this. Now, maybe they only hit the corporate rates, okay, but they're already talking, the, the corporate rates are already going up. Senator Joe Manchin says you've got to fix the Trump tax cuts on corporations and also the high earners. So if they're going to hit 400000 and above in terms of earning, tax rates are going up for them. That's going to happen. That's low-hanging fruit, low-hanging fruit. Fruit is also on the estate tax rate, okay? That's available too. But, but at some point, that's not enough to manage the interest and in all the entitlement growth that we've got on Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. It's just not enough. They're going to have to come down to the middle class at some point, be it popular, not popular. The new demographic that's coming in, Generation Y, uh, gener etc. Are have just grown up differently than did the boomers and and, and a large part of Generation X uh, who are just not going to be a large part of Generation X aren't as averse to tax increases for the overall benefit of society as have been the, the boomer generation. Okay, that was a dirty word for the boomer generation. I I see evidence uh, that I would argue support the proposition that these future generations, as they come into power at the later parts of this decade and into 2030, are not going to be as resistant to a tax rate increase by politicians if it's going to fit, uh, uh, fix a larger societal problem and make things better overall. It's just simply, uh, it just simply seems inevitable uh, to me. All of the data, CBO data repeatedly says 2030, 2032, Social Security uh, trustees report last September, same thing. 2030, that's seven, eight years off, okay? It's, it's, only, it's only seven, it's al almost just seven and a half. We're almost a, a quarter of a way through 2022, so it's coming closer. I, I, I just urge you that uh, you've got to start looking at tax positioning, optimizing your portfolios. In, in the movie The Graduate, 
the guy uh, pull. I, I was a little kid when it happened, but it was it was a huge movie, and, and the guy pulls the kid aside that just graduated college, and he says, "I've got one word for you: plastics." Well, if you bring that forward to today, today's one word for you: taxes. Okay, that's what's going to impact your retirement more than anything else. All right, happy Valentine's Day because we're at it. Here's your Valentine's gift for sticking with me through this thing because. Um, uh, spending is, is, is going to be uh, a, a big thing as, as we put Omicron behind us and, and, and we just emerge uh, into COVID being endemic into the society uh, and, and move on and we return to normal. Amazon, these are great companies. Amazon, okay, that wasn't a very hard one, but Darden Restaurants, DRI, Dollar Tree, Hershey Company, and Signet Jeweler, Jewelers, easy for me to say, right? Those are going to be great companies for you. Hang on to those for this trend, this spending trend, uh, probably into, uh, I'd say, by the end of the summer, all right, and see what they do. Let me give you a quick report on our little fun stocks that I just pulled out and said, they're going to weather this volatility storm well. Watch this. Schlumberger, up 13.8% since we advised you to, to uh, that was going to be a play for us. Schwab, kind of flat this week, but still up 4%. CSX Transportation, Overall, is flat for us, down a half a percent, but there's been a lot of volatility, so it's not a loser yet. And BOK uh, BOK Financial, up four and a quarter percent for the time that we've been holding it. Hey, hang with us. We'll treat you the right way. We're going to make some money. We'll find a bull market somewhere, regardless of the volatility, and we'll protect your assets as you go. If you need some help, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Until next week, stay happy.